Questions of justice or fairness are fundamental in political philosophy. We want political institutions that are fair, that deal with people justly. We want those institutions themselves and their very existence to be just, to be legitimate. But justice is also important in many different areas of ethics. We want ourselves to be fair-minded people and to act justly. But in addition to the individual virtue, we want organizations we're part of. We want businesses. We want other groups of people to act justly. And we want the institutions of our society to themselves embody justice. But what is justice? What does it mean to act justly or to be fair? Within business ethics, to take an example, there are a lot of questions that revolve around questions of justice. Is that a fair price for that product? Is that business paying its employees fairly? Is it fair to charge different people different prices for the same product or for the same service? All of those are questions about justice. And so before we tackle such individual questions there or in political philosophy or in some other area of ethics, we need to think about what justice is. There are a variety of different models of justice, as I'll describe them, in the history of philosophy. And it's important, I think, to look at those because although you can see these as competing theories of justice, battling against each other to give the correct theory of justice, my own view is that that's a bit misleading. The fact is that we think about justice in different ways. We use different models of justice when we think about justice in dealings of different kinds. What it is for a person to be fair-minded, for example, may be quite different from what it is for a business to set a fair price or for a political institution to be just. And so we need to think about fairness in a wide variety of contexts. What's fair when you think about the allocation of tomatoes that you've grown in your backyard, for example, may be a different thing from fairness of a professor assigning grades, for example, or the fairness of a set of social institutions, or fair dealing between employer and employee. So it's not obvious that all of those different kinds of questions should be handled by the same model of justice. Before we get into the details of any particular model of justice, I want to think about different kinds of justice. There is, as Aristotle stresses and as Plato stressed, a general kind of justice that we apply to individual people. You might say it's the same as right action, but specifically in our dealings with other people. So it's a general state of character. And you might understand that in different ways, but we can talk about a person being fair, being fair-minded, being a just person. And that involves a certain kind of, well, from a platonic point of view, a balance of the soul. From Aristotle's point of view, it's pretty much just equivalent to virtue, but in relation to other people. It is a very general sort of justice. Usually, however, within ethics, we're not focused so much on justice as an individual virtue of individual people. We're thinking about just dealings, just actions, just institutions. And in those kinds of contexts, it has a different sort of significance. Today, I want to talk about two different kinds that are especially important from the point of view of ethics. One of them is the notion of distributive justice. Distributive justice is the question of how the goods, but also the responsibilities of a society, should be distributed among its members. This can be a large group, a society at large, an entire nation, for example, even an entire culture, or the international community. We can talk about justice internationally. But we could also think about justice within another sort of organization. We can think about justice within the classroom, let's say, where different people have a chance to talk. We can have justice within an organization, a company, let's say, where people deal with one another justly, and where people deal with customers, suppliers, contractors, and so on, justly. So we need to think about justice of a variety of different kinds, not only this question of distributive justice as opposed to other kinds, but then distribution within a society, or internationally, or within a company, or within a family, within a classroom. All of those may take on a slightly different character, but all of them have that character of deciding how the goods, but also the responsibilities of the group, 
should be distributed among the members of the group. Wages, for example, what's a reasonable wage for that position, for that role within the company? Sometimes it's a question of who should be hired, who should be promoted, who should get that job. Those kinds of issues are hard questions of distribution. There can be burdens that we have to decide how to distribute. There can be advantages, positions, raises that have to be distributed. It may be a question of simply budget. Different groups are competing for the budget. There's a question of distribution. Which organization, which group within the company should get what amount of the budget? All of those are questions of distribution, and they fall under the heading of distributive justice. There's another different kind of justice that Aristotle distinguishes. It's retributive justice. It's sometimes also called compensatory or rectificatory justice. The idea is really what happens when something goes wrong, when someone has been treated unjustly. How do we set things right again? There are many issues that fall under the heading of retributive justice, not just questions of what is an appropriate punishment for that criminal, but also things like this. What would be appropriate compensation for somebody who's injured on the job? What would be an appropriate judgment for a jury, for example, to make if one company has cheated another company on a contract? Those kinds of questions involve setting things right again after something has gone wrong, or at least punishing the wrongdoer if it's impossible to do anything to set things right. There are a number of different purposes, and people debate the purposes that are legitimate in the field of retributive justice, but however we answer those questions, we're going to have to have some kind of theory of how we compensate people, how we punish people, how we try to rectify situations that have somehow gone awry. Now, in this course, we're not going to worry much about retributive justice. Within the context of business ethics or organizational ethics, the primary questions are distributive, they're not really retributive, though those questions become very serious in the philosophy of law and a variety of other branches of philosophy. So retributive questions are an important part of the general issue of justice, and they belong in an important place in ethics. But I'm not really going to be talking about them in this series of lectures. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on models of distributive justice specifically. We're going to be thinking about how to answer the question, who should bear the burdens of the group? Who should gain the benefits of the group? And how do we go about making that kind of decision?